but I can be comfortable and still have no clue what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like I can be comfortable totally. with playing, but have no clue of what I'm doing. What's going on, Base Nation? We're back at it again here with myself and Callan, uh, Base Nation Academy podcast. So we're just kind of shooting the breeze, talking about different topics uh, that a lot of people talk about and discuss. And we would, you know, just kind of want to chop it up and discuss our thoughts. And uh, Callan has a lot of experience as well as I have a, a couple of years of experience myself, um, you know, just playing bass and just being in the industry, period. Uh, but one of the topics I want to talk about, uh, if you guys haven't seen, first of all, if you guys haven't seen the last episode, please go check that out. We talk about almost everything. Um, so it's hard to get a subject on what we talked about. Just go look at it. Anyway, so this week, we're talking about the importance or the difference between learning technically learning professionally, I guess you can say, or just school based or just being able to read and learning music that way versus only being able to play by ear. Now, this is it's completely different sides to both. Um, a lot of people grow up and, and are not able to play by ear and they only rely on technicals. So I just wanted to get Callan's take on it. I know I know where I'm at. I know where I stand on it. Um, but yeah, what do, what do you think about, I mean, even being in school yourself, even literally right. at, at the moment, <laughs> being in school, a uh, music school yourself, what do you say? Cause I know you can play by ear too. I know, I know that, but what would you say, you know, the dynamic is what's better? What's, is it a better thing? Is it a worse, you know, what, what is it? Yeah. Oh, it's tricky, man. Uh, because there are so many of the great players that I think came from both sides. Oh, God, you know, yeah. I mean, you, you start out, you know, early on when, you know, higher music education wasn't really a thing. Right. Uh, and there are some real monsters who just just have the ear. And I know of some modern day players uh, who are at the top of the scene and can absolutely shred and, and they can't read, True. you know, and and so they aren't mutually exclusive and you can you can have one, you can have the other, you can have both. Uh, but I, I tend to, I like the reading side. I like mm. the, uh, the educational aspect. Um, and yeah, I'm biased. I go to music school, you know, I, right. I spent a good chunk of change getting right. that education. Right. So I'm trying to be like, right, this is worth yeah. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, you went to music school. Yeah. Just a funny story. Uh, I kind of didn't. I kind of did. <laughs> uh, what's, let's actually, talk about well, it. well, first, what school, what school are you? You're at... Uh, I'm Cal Arts, California Cal Arts. Institute of the That's Arts. right. That's right. That's right. And how long have you been there? This is my fourth year, so... Okay, so you're right. You're, you're, yeah, you're about to be sweet. Yeah. Um, okay, so you got a lot of experience with that. I don't. Like, uh, as far as being in college, like a, at a collegiate level... I don't have a lot of experience with that. Now, I did go to a performing arts high school, but those two things are like night and day, right? Um, even with dealing with bass, because the community college that I went to for a year and a half, I didn't finish it, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I just, I didn't, there were no teachers. Like there were uh, no specific like bass teachers there. You know, there were certain classes you can take and it just kind of felt like regular music class like you would take in high school or middle school. Um, but in high school, I did go to perform in art school and it was the same thing. You know, I started off in concert band playing the baritone, big, hmm. you know, baritone. Know it was very, I, it was very random. I don't understand why I did. <laughs> I think because they just kind of assigned me that instrument in middle school when I was playing band. So I've had experience playing and reading other instruments uh in that setting but i wanted to play bass man like i wanted to you know i i went there and it's like okay you can't really play right now because we have a bass player in the jazz combo or whatever they um whatever they had at the time so i had to kind of wait but i auditioned on bass and on top of that man i think i got lucky i got lucky my sister and my brother went to the same school so it was like you know you know who you know so it was like yeah my brother's coming in he plays bass blah 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 you know they heard me play i really didn't technically have to audition but um uh, but yeah i did and i i didn't even play bass until like 11th grade like my junior yeah 11th grade 
So even then, I was still learning myself. There was no different transition as far as learning the bass itself. But I had already started my journey of learning music, you know, just reading music, understanding what it was, but not having an idea of how to translate translate that to the bass. So that's my story as far as school goes. And then then when I went to college, I did do like some jazz. What did I do? I did jazz performance, I think. And I think I had a couple of theory classes. So I can't even remember. It was so long ago. Um, but yeah, that w it felt the same way. There was not. I felt like I wasn't being taught my instrument. I just felt like I was being taught music you know what i mean yeah uh, and that's a good totally. it, it, it could be a good thing and a, and a and a bad thing at the same time because i had all of this knowledge that i had to say okay i had to go home and and say okay let's buckle down let's try to put two and two together and it's, it's one thing learning it on on paper and it's another thing trying to connect the dots and putting it on your base so that was the journey that i had it was more self-discovery and research of my own to be able to put all of these things that i was learning technicals uh into place now even with a music school or music college i have no no um i have no experience so let me know <laughs> And other people know that maybe wanting to go to college, and I'm not saying I didn't go because I just just it's bad. Like I just didn't go. Like it just happened to not go. But what is it like now in a music school? What are you studying? What are you majoring in? What are you like? How is that process? Because I don't even know. I just know Berkeley guys that go to Berkeley, and you know, it was it MI? No, not MI. Yeah, yeah, yeah Musicians yeah. Institute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, right now it's interesting because. Uh, there's a big split and I was talking about this with a lot of people when we were choosing to go to music schools and in yeah. high school and you know there because there are so many people that choose to go down that rabbit hole and kind of get stuck you know there are a mm. lot of people who go to music school and then get really caught up in in the education side and 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 you know that that's that's not really where I saw myself going and I think kind of the goal for music school for me was to drop out you know not not really but it was <laughs> kind of was like <laughs> it was like if you're you know in Hilarious. your fourth year and you haven't had you know tour experience and you haven't had you know you haven't gotten out to do anything then it was like uh-oh you know like because that's for me music school was all about finding people who are like-minded finding other musicians that i could play with you know and that that's that was the big draw for me because i also man it's interesting yeah, that I, you say that like the, you say in the goal so your goal or is that a lot of people's goal because i don't know maybe because i wasn't that kind of person i just didn't i didn't you know the, the tour life thing isn't technically for me even though i have done it somewhat to a you know degree for a long period of time I didn't yeah. necessarily want that to be the goal, but would you say a lot of people that go to music school is that's their goal to say, Hey, I eventually want to stop doing this so I can venture out and tour. Or is that one of the I, big goals for everybody? I, you know, I think going in, that was a lot of people's goals, but there are also, I mean, especially at the school that I go to, uh, there are a lot of people who, you know, there are a lot of people into composition and a lot mm, of people mm, into, you know, making mm, their own thing. And so that, sense. right. It's hard to just go out and tour when you're on, when you're on your own. Right. So, uh, right. There are a lot of people that I know who are really pushing their own projects and doing that, which is super respectable and great. But, uh, yeah, I talked to a few people in high school. I remember, uh, that was kind of a, a group goal was for all of us. Like we, we all got to get on tours eventually. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Hopefully we can do that in college. Uh, and then once I got there and after I started touring, I kind of realized like, oh, I, I can do both, you know, I, cause it'd be nice to get a degree, just a backup, you know, probably a good thing to have, but I mean, you, I, I don't need it for what I'm doing. I feel like I've, <laughs> you know, I've, I've kind of gotten to a point where I don't, I don't need it anymore. I could kind of fall back on other things, but I also the other side is I love the education aspect mm. and I didn't think that I was going to love that going in. Gotcha. You know, I, I went into school with pretty much no theory knowledge, all ear, all, you know, 
your pentatonic minor you know it's like here we go all day, all day and you know i could play pretty fast so let's go yeah. and uh yeah no i was a big punch in the face when i yeah. got to oh, school I'm and took the, the theory sure. exam sure. you know but st started out in like the fundamentals class you know with all the kids who, who don't play instruments right you know and but then it started to, to click and, and I started to understand kind of the purpose of theory because I just mm. didn't understand how I would apply it. Right. You know, going in, it was like, I don't really need to learn all this. This is for, you know, guitars, piano players, chords. I don't play chords. Right, right, right. You know, but once you start to understand like, oh, tritone substitutions and secondary mm. dominance, then you're like, yeah. oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if I could throw that in and, that, you know, I mean, yeah. the bass note could change the whole chord. Absolutely. You know, it changes the chord function. So you know once you kind of nerd out about it it uh it can really help your sound and, and plenty of people can do that without the theory knowledge and they don't even know what they're doing absolutely uh, i have no I have I, no clue but are are actually implementing what that is what those technical terms and you know theory and have been probably doing it for years and don't even understand that that's what they're doing yeah but there was but, a clip but, but even grasping like the 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 knowledge of saying okay now i have the ability to do this it just makes you stretch and think even further like, totally yeah <laughs> and, and it makes me think i mean there was that one clip we put up i i a couple years ago now maybe but it was demo great yeah yeah fantastic yeah, yeah. bass player and it was yeah. you breaking down a lick that he had done mm -hmm. and he was in the comments and he's like <laughs> Thank you for explaining this because I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, yeah, this he's all just this man. came to me. Uh, yeah, but I remember hanging on to that and being like, "Wow, that's so cool!" Like it's to some be of the able best, just... some of the best freaking musicians, man. And they, and it's funny because Bubby talks about this to me too. Um, he says the same thing, and he says, "Man, he said some people understand it and know how to explain it." He said, "Man, I couldn't tell you what I was doing." Like he said, "I." I I have no clue most times. He said, I couldn't even tell you in a way that you could kind of break it down theoretically. But a lot of people rely, it's not that they're saying that they can't or they don't know what they're doing. It's just that it's a, it's a, it's a, an ability to be able to explain it and, you know, just kind of convey the message over to the audience or to whoever's learning in a way that they can understand. They have trouble with doing that. Totally get it because I was the same way. I haven't always been good at being able to explain stuff but they totally lean on how it feels how it sounds yeah you know what i mean like they totally lean on that and i i love that aspect of players because it a allows you to have so much creativity you know what i mean like some people i feel like that only play just by reading or have only played technically they're kind of robotic in a sense, you know, they don't yeah. allow the creativity to take place because this, this has to be correct. Like this has like, and they're, they're so technical to the point where it's like, man, op open up just a little bit. Give, give some of your own sound and your own flavor in there. And it's like, man, it's, it's like a blessing and a curse because, you know, if you have both sides of it, I, I say this all the time. If you have both sides sides of it it's like a freaking explosion it's like a it, it's crazy to be able to gel both your theoretical knowledge and your own personal flavor and sound and playing by ear and you just blend those two together is is absolutely freaking amazing man but yeah somebody like like damo and um <laughs> like bubby they say it all the time man. like I'm glad you explained that because I don't know what I was doing. I just, just sounded good, but I love, I love that. You know what I mean? I, I, yeah. I love it. That's like, how would you come up with those lines or create stuff like that? If you just only went technical, you know? Right. You um, can't. yeah, no, no, you, you can't do it. So that's, that's what kind of leads me to. And it's funny that you said this and I'm glad you're saying this because this is the debate. This is not even the bait. This is the question that I get as a teacher all the time. Like what's theory going to do for me? Like, how can I implement this? Why do I need it? Especially being a bass player. It's like chords. Why do I need to learn chords? And like you said, secondary dominance and like tritones and, you know, different chord yeah. structures. And, you know, it's like, why do I need to learn this? But once you start getting into it, it's like, oh, I'm da I'm, I'm, I'm about to be dangerous now. Don't let me learn too much. Exactly. <laughs> don't, let me, right. don't let me learn too much. But that's that's how I was, man. My mind just completely open. 
Um, and I thought the same thing. I was like, man, I'm a bass player. I don't need all that stuff. Man. I'm just playing the bass line. But once I went to a, com I went there, I went to a completely different level, completely different level. And I'm, I'm just glad you're saying it because people look at me like I'm crazy when I'm talking about chords and I'm talking about, you know, other yeah. things like that. So you get it, you get it, you understand. So totally. I get both, yeah. I get both sides of it. I just haven't had that, you know, college experience or just, I wish I, I kind of wish I had, but I, I at the same time, I kind of like the self discovery that I that I was able to get just from experimenting, and I say that all the time too. Um, but just being able to put two and two together, man, when you get taught those things, and you know, having those light bulb moments that I talk about all the time. Now, into your plane, that's what I wanted to ask you too. In, in further into your plane, when you first when you started learning theory, you started getting comfortable. Um, in the class, started learning these different things. Was there a light bulb moment? Was there was was there just like a click? Like was there a process, like a slow curve, just like okay, I'm kind of getting it now? Or was there something that just kind of went off in your head? Because a lot of people ask me that, like, okay, when did it click for you? I I, I can't really explain a click time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting. I think the the closest thing I have to that was kind of the idea of being able to play across the neck just mm. really fluently you know any scale just being able to move that anywhere and not think about it nice. um and that but that also you know that wasn't a click that didn't just happen overnight right right you know but it was that that initial like oh it's it's all connected you know i could play mm. my c major scale i could start on the low e you know, and right. I could play all, you know, below the all fifth the fret up. and then mm -hmm. I could shift and, and, and then, yeah, I mean, I probably spent six months or a year just every day in every scale, you know, majors and minor, everything in all the modes too, because it's all yeah. the same shape. Yeah. But once you can see, you know, cause what I was seeing was one major scale shape, you know, starting, starting on that, that middle finger and yeah. da, 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 da. The two four one two four one three four exactly yeah. <laughs> and i would see that and then maybe start on the first finger and have the you know go yeah. up thirds that yeah. way first position yeah and then and then i kind of was like if i if i learned all of those patterns and did every single one of them in every position on the neck and then i just kind of randomly join them together my brain will create a pattern that is the size of the entire fretboard. Absolutely. And that was a moment. I mean, it took a long time to get there. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. the thing about practice too, is something I realized in music school was I, I really love to play. And I thought that playing was practice. Mm. You know, I, I throughout mm. high school, I was, I was playing hours a day and right. saying that I was practicing. You know, and in a way it is practicing. I was surely I was getting better, but yeah, practicing hurts, dude. It practicing is was you're sitting there with the bass and you're going, ah, is that, yeah. is that right? Is that, how does this go? And you just, you're, you want to quit so bad because it hurts. Yeah. And physically it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Physically, your hands are cramping up. I mean, it right. sucks. Yeah. And people don't really talk about that aspect of it because. Yeah. You know, but you can tell too when you're playing with people. You're like, oh, you you put in the time. You you, yeah, you, you felt some, some pain yeah, to get absolutely. there. You know, absolutely. Yeah, that's funny, man. You you talk about. I want to stay there for a second. You talk about practice, and I I have a, a you know philosophy, I guess you could say, on practicing. Now, what you call practice, you said you weren't really practicing. Uh, you said somewhat it was practice. Now, when you talk about that, I say this in my story all the time. And when you talk about that, I, I think of myself when I started playing and I was playing every day nonstop. Um, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to jump back and forth here, but I was playing every day nonstop, hours and hours a day because I just love to play. Right. But that was practice to an extent that was more of a familiar practice. It was more of a, an, an, um, I wouldn't even say stamina, I guess you can say practice more just kind of mind muscle connection type of thing you're literally putting in the time with your bass to be comfortable playing your bass right and you have to put in that time to an extent but when you get into specifics 
when you get into certain patterns, into certain scales, into certain phrases and things like that, that you will practice or now that's a completely different section of your practice routine. Um, totally. So it, it all it all comes together. It's just it's like the mindless practicing that you're doing. It's not technically building you up theoretically. Right. It's just like a muscle thing. It's, it's like a lifting weight. I'm, I'm just getting used to my base. Now I'm getting comfortable, but I can be comfortable and still have no clue what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like I can be comfortable totally. with playing, but have no clue of what I'm doing. So there's two different sides to, to practicing. And I, I always get this question a lot. How long should I practice? And I've talked about this numerous times before. A lot of people ask me, how long do I practice? You know, how many how many hours and, you know, how many times do I play this one scale or that one scale? Like you really have to want to do it. And like you said, it sucks sometimes. Like you really have to want to like time will go by. You won't even realize <laughs> like I, I couldn't count the time because I didn't really care. You know, whatever I time, whatever time I had available, I, it was just put to practicing. I that's just that's just what happened when I had to stop. I just stopped <laughs> like I can't yeah. get anybody. I can't I cannot give anybody a certain time. And I, and I almost hate that question only because everybody's so different. And even now, even with you, like even with touring, with school, with everything you do, uh, even here, you know, working here at Base Nation, like it's, it's you have a certain amount of time that you have that you can even practice. Yeah, for sure. So, so whenever you can get it in, you get it in. You're not counting like, OK, put my timer on 10 minutes. All right. 15 minutes. And, right. you know, I'm done with my one scale. It just doesn't go like that. Um, but I completely understand people's need and want to have to want to have some type of structured practice. And I always say learning things and playing the things that are the most difficult, that's the practice. That's that's yeah. that's the valuable practice that a lot of people don't get because they shy away from the difficult stuff. Like you just said, man, it's like, yo, this hurts. Like, I, I how, well, how in a, I want to quit. I want to stop. <laughs> like, F, yeah. F this base. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, so, but you have to get past, you kind of have to get past that, but that's the difficult part. Like, and the weird thing about me is I love, I absolutely love that part. Yeah. And I, and I think that's what kind of, you know, separates those guys that are just hardcore bass players or just, you know, kind of wanting to do it just because it's something fun to do. Like I wanted it. Like if it's something hard for me to figure out, we just did it not too long ago in a live stream class. I would take all day long or several days to figure out this one part. Like if it's something yeah. crazy and I have never played it before, like I have to, I, it just, that challenge is a turn on to me, man. Like seriously, like for yeah. real, I, I, I can't get enough of that. And that's why I've been able to still, you know, I guess strive to get better. I don't know. How, I don't know if I have been, but at least strive to get better. Um, year by year as I'm playing, man. So that's that's great. That's a great point you made as far as practicing, man. That's that is super important to understand. That's why yeah. I kind of wanted to go back to that. Like a lot of people just don't spend the right time practicing. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Yeah, that's a that's sort of the practice, but you got to play the things that are the most difficult. Got to, you got to, you have to. Yeah. And I mean, the inverse too is, you know, I mean, going to music school, there's a huge community of practicing, right? I mean, we got all the practice rooms and, you know, and yeah. you go down and, man, I have friends who live in the practice rooms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was talking to, talking to a dude last week and a good friend of mine, and he had a sleeping bag, you know, Ooh, and he was okay. like, serious? he's like, yeah, <laughs> he's no joke. <laughs> and he, he's serious, like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be here as long. I was like, all right. Wow. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll uh, I'll stop by later. See how you're doing. You know, it's funny, it's man. Like and the college that I went to, the it was a, a community college. We had practice rooms too, and mm -hmm. like every free like free class or in between class, whatever. Like I would have it would have like a, either a bass amp in there or something. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was a piano. It was always a piano in there and an amp. So I think one of my buddies had a uh, Jerome Flood. I did a couple videos with him. Crazy drummer. He would say. Derek, let's go to the practice. Like even sometimes I didn't even feel like going, but this dude was like, I want to practice all day, every day, like nonstop. He carried his sticks in his hand. He was one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, but me and him would go back and forth. So I will be playing with this, 
you know, with my friend, his drummer, crazy drummer, being able to put those hours in, man, and just any free time that I had. And that's a whole nother level of practicing too, being able to practice with other people. You know, iron sharp as iron, man. Not not only with the same instrument, but I was practicing with somebody that played drums. I would pl- practice with someone, um, one of my good friends here, um, John Fawcett. He lives here in Rochester. He was the MD for, or the keyboard. I don't know if he was MD or not, but he played keyboard for Bruno Mars. Uh, I think he still does. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So me and him would go back and forth, uh, like when we just had free time. So I would, I would like practice and challenge his brain. He would challenge mine. Like we would go back and forth playing like Chick Corea stuff and <laughs> like all this yeah. crazy stuff that he knew. And I was like, man, okay, I got to play that. So we challenged each other, man. And, and that's super important to understand too, because you need that other iron to sharpen yours. Um, and and I, I, I love that. I love that aspect as far as, you know, being able to learn from others, not only just, other bass players because some people just only like okay i'm only going to practice with bass players if i just want to get better i only practice well okay well wait if you practice with a drummer now you're practicing on your time you know what i mean like yeah. if you if you practice with a keyboard player now you're practicing like being in tune or playing your part as a bass player you know yeah. just leading off of him like filling out if you practice with a guitar player same thing like okay now i gotta play these bass lines with his guitar riffs or whenever he's soloing or something or these chords or, it's so many different things you can do, and I've rarely practiced with bass players. I think that's what kind of elevated me super quick. And uh, yeah, those practice rooms are gold, man. <laughs> utilize, yeah. utilize that, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And something I love to do is is just play with people who are better than me. Ah, you know, that yeah, was something I, I went that's into it. college with that mindset of like, let's find the best people that I can play with, and you know, I. There, and there's a little bit of, you know, I remember when I first got to Cal Arts, uh, within my first week or two, you know, there was some guy and he was like a, getting his master's degree in like jazz mm. piano or something. Mm. And a friend of mine that I had just made was like, hey, uh, I know this guy, he's, he's about to graduate. Apparently he's really good. We should, we should do a, you know, a little trio, you yeah. know, just in a practice room. And I was like, oh, great. And uh it, Dude, I remember showing up and the guy was just like, all right, how about, you know, standard, you know, jazz, I, I, just speaking another language, hey, you know, just saying, like, just calling out a standard that I had never heard of. Yeah. And he was like, yep. you know it? And I was like, oh, yeah, I think yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, and he's just like, all right, I'll, I'll follow you, man. I'll, yeah. Six, seven, and you. just starts just shredding, you yeah, know, yeah, just yeah. like, just, yeah. and I remember just falling on my face and just, yeah, that just be trying real to quick. Yeah. trying to keep up and going you know what what am i doing here and he was he's going solo solo oh yeah i don't know all right over these crazy chains i don't know <laughs> right. and he's right. playing these inversions that are like i can't even hear what he's doing anymore these extensions I'm like, <laughs> you just blacking out you know i don't even know what the root of the chord is right and we're, you know i'm just playing these random notes <laughs> exactly. he's playing these these ran- and i'm playing these random notes and he's going uh like like it just sounds horrible but he right. thinks that i'm doing it on purpose you right know? right and, i mean that's that's, that's jazz, the jazz thing but uh yeah i remember coming back from that rehearsal going okay i gotta learn my standards I gotta, yeah i gotta get on it you yeah. know yeah so it takes that kind of experience too absolutely you know absolutely. and that's good yeah what you're saying you know iron sharpens iron so find some really good other players and that mm-hmm. that'll just get you going faster absolutely Absolutely. And it's, and, and it's funny, one thing that I, I'll mention, I won't, you know, we won't make this too long, but we'll come back and talk about it. They've got so much stuff to talk about. It's not even yeah, man. <laughs> um, but in the gospel community, they have different things called sheds, right? They have, I'm sure you've seen, I'm sure a lot of people have seen them. They call it gospel, either gospel sheds. They're not called gospel sheds from the gospel guys, but they're just sheds. Uh, but they're just sheds where they get together and they, you know, share ideas. You know, it's a bunch of drum sets. Mostly it turns into a drum shed uh, most times. Uh, but, you know, you got keyboard players, you got bass players, you know. Um, and the sheds that I went to, uh, for some reason, I was always stuck being the one bass player there um, or playing. I don't know why. It always happened like that. But I'm not sh- Anyway, but I was able to play along 
you know, with these crazy musicians, um, either drummers or keyboard players and, and just experiencing that and being in the same room, not saying, OK, I got to play a gig with these guys. But there were opportunities to where anybody the you know, it was open mic night, basically, um, to where anybody can kind of get on like, hey, you play. OK, come on, let's, you know, do a couple rounds with us and or whatever, you know, on this groove. And I think that really sharpened a lot of people in the gospel world, too, as well. Not only just growing up, being around it, but being able to uh, communicate freely, being able to fellowship, you know, uh, freely around the brothers or sisters that you had inside of the gospel arena or in even in the church or just, you know, regardless of where you were, uh, even guys that weren't in church, you know, they would come to these sheds and just kind of play. And it was we just, just somewhere we had it, you know, it was just held there most times at churches. But uh, I think that really sharpened me as well. Yeah, um, I bet. We, oh, yeah, I mean, crazy musicians that I got to be able to play with super early in my process of learning. And uh, it just it just opened my mind up and we would do different things. We would like, OK, now, all right, shut that groove off. Let's go, let's do a seven, four groove. I'm not seven, four, seven, eight. Let's do a seven eight groove uh, now on top of this. See how you can play along with this. So the drummers will be, you know, be playing in seven. It's like, like what? Like what do you expect yeah. me to do? Right. So it was that on the fly type of thinking. Like okay, totally. now and then I, they will look at me. Okay, create the baseline and then we'll go off of that. I'm like, why me? <laughs> why? <laughs> like, but it was it it was that on the spot. It was that humbling moment when somebody gets on or another bass player gets on. And they're shredding. They're. It was like, man, I, okay. It wasn't a hate thing. It was more like a, okay, I got to, I got to step it up. Well, okay. What was yeah. that that you just, okay, let me, let me show me what you just, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was, it was a whole community of that. And it's, it was awesome. It still happened from time to time and not as much as they used to back in the day, but yeah, yeah, man. So, I mean, let's, let's piggyback <laughs> back to the original comment. Yeah. Uh, if you said you had to pick a side, if I'm not mistaken, I think you said, I hate to I, I hate to have to I hate to you. pick a side. Yeah, yeah. I hate to yeah. yeah, I hate to even say that. But you 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 know, you guys get yeah. what we're talking about. It's good sides to both sides. There's negatives to both sides. You know, I and I think they, you know, outweigh each other, you know, kind of way to you know, totally. kinda of way the same. And but I I'm I'm biased because I learned from ear. I'm biased because I love the fact that you can play freely and express yourself in a way once you play by ear versus, you know, technically only learning and being able to play and read music. Uh, but ultimately, the goal is to be able to do both and gel them together. Totally. That makes the greatest musicians ever. ever yeah, to I me. agree. To me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, man. So let's let's wrap it up, man. So, guys, if you have not seen the last episode, we'll be doing this weekly. Uh, if you want to talk about any certain things or topics, feel free to put them in and suggest them. We'll kind of, you know, look through them and we'll probably talk about all of them because I'm sure there's a lot. Uh, but, yeah, just oh, kind of yeah. put them in. Put them in. Let us know and uh, we'll chop it up and, and we'll talk about it. But, uh, you know, meet us in the next one uh, and comment your suggestions down below. Me and Callan, out. Thank <laughs> you.